Hello and welcome to Greenlight. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Jennifer Edwards, the Director of Marketing Communications here at Landis & Gear. In today's episode, we're going to continue our Future of Energy discussion with two very special guests. Mike Phillips, CEO of Sense, sits down with Landis & Gear's very own Tim Weidenbach, our SVP of Technologies. Together, this powerful partnership is transforming the future of energy management. Tim and Mike will provide some insight into the work their teams have been doing and the innovation that lies ahead. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Mike Phillips and Tim Weidebach. Hey, thanks, Jen. I'm really glad to be here today and uh, excited about this conversation. I've, I've known Mike for a few years and we've had some really interesting in, uh, conversations about the future of energy from two different, very different perspectives. But Mike, welcome. I really appreciate you joining me today. Thank you, Tim. It's great to be here with you. You too, Mike. Uh, look, the industry is changing at such a rapid pace. And a little background for the audience on me. I, I'm, an, I'm a utility distribution engineer. That's where I grew up doing my work at the Southern Company. And when I joined, even when I joined Landis in year 15 years ago, I saw the meter in a different light than others. And uh, I've seen the grid change quite a bit. And today it's just going through remarkable change and uh, to get ready for a future that's much, much different than when I started my career. And it's really driven by the edge of the grid means so much more now. Uh, you know, the customer has always mattered, but our focus was on how do we keep that centralized uh, delivery of energy stable and uh, in a way that we, uh, we look at it different today because now, you add to that to the fact that we not we now have to support a lot of disruption at the edge of the grid with distributed energy resources and different things changing the way we deliver energy. But the consumer now is an active part of that equation. And the consumer, uh, you'll hear the term sometimes as becoming a prosumer. I mean, they may be putting energy on the grid at times. So that's a much different dynamic than I ever grew up with as a distribution engineer. So we have a lot of challenges ahead of us, but it's really exciting because companies like Landis and Gear and Sense are applying technology to solve this problem versus just putting bigger wires in the air. And that's why it's exciting to talk today with Mike. Uh, Mike, go, Mike and I go back a few years and instantly sort of had the same uh, energy about what's going on in the utility world, but coming at it from two very different angles. You know, I think volts and amps and harmonics and whatever happens out on the grid, and Mike's very focused on what happens behind the meter. But what we realized was we saw data that we both got excited about for two different reasons. So I want to get Mike's view on just how did sense come to be? And I believe there's a mutual benefit of our, for our utility customers from both of our angles of what our products do, but what brought us together, Mike? Yeah, so thanks, Tim. And you know, as Tim mentions, we actually come from the consumer-facing tech world. So many of us came from the speech recognition world doing these voice assistants on mobile phones and so on. So we started since in 2013, uh, again, coming from that background, but with the view that we'd like to take uh, kind of what we know from consumer and providing kind of deep data AI kind of applications and how do we uh, bring that to residential uh, consumers to help them make their homes better from an energy perspective. And, um, you know, looked at, gee, could we just uh, get data from existing meters and do some interesting analytics on them and quickly decided we could not because uh, we realized to engage consumers, we, we have to have a, a much more real-time, uh, hands-on, detailed experience with what's going on in your home. So we set out to build an application that just from energy data lets you know that the, 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 the toaster's on and using this amount of uh, power, let you know what your AC is doing, let you know if there might be a, a failure mode in, 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 your, your, in one of your devices. And we just couldn't do that from existing Data. So we went down a path and are, are deep down a path where we have our own behind the meter hardware, as Tim mentioned, that goes inside the electrical panel, uh, measures the power just like a meter does, but at extremely high uh, data resolution with a lot of edge computing. Um, and that's been very successful. We're working with consumers and utilities, um, but the, the key is how do you get that to market at scale? We've always realized it should be 
uh, built into the, the infrastructure of the home and the meter is a place where that happens. So um, we'll, we'll tell you more of the story here in a few minutes, but we, we quickly got together and have been uh, deep into making that real the last couple of years. You know, Mike, I, I really see consumers as the catalyst for a lot of the transformation going on today. Uh, like I said, much different than we did in the in, in my early days. And I think utilities have been searching for a lot of ways to better engage them for for a long time. A lot, a lot of energy products and things. But today, it, your team seems dedicated at that consumer energy solution level at a much higher, with, with much greater rewards for the consumers that I've seen in the past. In your experience, what are some of the best ways for utilities to engage with their customers today? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And um, we, we do view that as we are all looking to decarbonize, we need more and more renewables on the grid. Uh, there's more issues around resilience. We really need uh, engaged consumers because look, consumers do have a big impact on how energy and other resources are used in their home. So that's why you have to have engaged consumers. And we also realize that to engage consumers, two main things. First, it has to be broader than just energy. So even though we, we care about the energy aspects of this, to engage the consumers, you, you have to bring a broader value proposition to them than just energy. And this is where we're coming at it from a overall intelligence for the home uh, versus a narrow energy focus. Um, and then the other is, as I mentioned a, a few minutes ago, uh, we've seen kind of what's happened in, uh, utility portals and others in the past from existing AMI data where there's some historical view of what's been going on. We just don't find that uh, compelling enough for consumers. It's gotta be real time. You gotta be able to go around in your house, make changes, plug things in, look at things and see what's happening uh, right when it's happening. It's the only way to get consumers bought into this. So so that's where we went down a our first uh, uh, versions of these applications is it has to be real time has to be detailed and has to be broader than just just energy. And again, that's what led us to, we have to do this with our own hardware in the home, but as we'll talk about here in a few moments, that that's gonna change. But let me just bring in one other analogy though, because I, I think it feeds into this well. I, we saw this happen in the telecom space. In my previous company uh, was in 2005. And back then uh, a phone was just a phone. And if you wanted a music player or a navigation system, you'd have to go buy some separate piece of hardware to do that specialized function. And as we all know, uh, the telecom infrastructure of phones now became this computation and application platform that opened up an entire uh, new market for applications, functionality, just unimaginable uh, that you could think of when a phone was just a phone. And the same can happen here in the energy infrastructure and the, the meter is at the center of that. Yeah, that, that really is an exciting story about how things are changing behind the meter. And, you know, Mike, I think that drove this and a lot of other things drove the fact that if, uh, a few years ago, we realized that we needed to reimagine that meter. And I'd come to similar conclusions. Like I said, we came together for two different reasons, but really had the same story in that uh, we need more data and closer to real time to both give the consumer better products, but also help manage the edge of the grid better. So we we reimagined the meter and we created our latest platform called Ravello. And we have worked together to integrate the Sense technology into that meter because uh, not just measuring intervals, uh, periods of energy use, but actually seeing the characteristics of the energy delivery, we felt was important. So. I, from your perspective, why do you think utilities would find Ravello attractive? You know, how does it benefit their consumers? Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone uses these kind of similar words around distributed intelligence, edge computing, and so on. But you know, through our, our work with you, Tim, and the rest of your team, you know, it's all the details that matter. G getting high resolution data is just key to the kinds of things we're doing for detecting different uh, appliances and devices in the home having a flexible compute platform, enough edge computing, and have flexibility around the networking. You need all those and they need to come together in a cohesive way in order for applications like Sense to be possible and, and run, it, run in this, this new infrastructure. And you know the, the, the tight collaboration that we've had between Sense and Landis and Gear has resulted in this, I think, transformational 
new set of AMI infrastructure that's going to allow not just us, but a, a wide range of applications that will start to allow utilities to engage in, in consumers in a broad way. Well, Mike, you and I, you, you and I have talked enough where you know I see just as many benefits on the other side of the meter. Uh, your experience with your products in the past, you you know you see things coming in from the grid. You just you're not sure how to interpret them. But you know that that's where I have seen that value to the utility on the grid side to be just a, a really huge benefit to them because when you're actually looking at the characteristics of the uh, of the waveform, the quality of the power, you know you. It's it's like what the benefits you're giving to the consumer for for really understanding what might be going wrong in their home, for instance. You can do the same thing on the other side to understand things that are not just right in the edge of the grid. So I think the biggest thing I tell customers is Ravello is going to allow us to understand when there's a fault in their network and not just know that there's an outage, but actually have a high degree of certainty of what type of fault occurred where it occurred within that distribution system. Uh, we have to make all of our meters sort of work together to do that, but it's the same concept that you do inside the home. And I think that transforms when the utility now knows what type of crew to roll exactly to the right spot and be ready to address a problem, you know, the consumer gets benefits of much quicker power restoration. Uh, when the utility has the ability to understand the ongoing disruptions, if there's penetration of whether it's distributed energy resources, unusual loads like EV charging, anything that's not normal to their to their world, the meter ought to be able to tell them very quickly what's going on. And that's the vision for Ravello. So a lot of grid side benefits to go along uh, with what you see. How energy benefits us in our society today and how we use it, what we both do. And I, I just wonder what what does the future of energy look like to you from the consumer's perspective in the big picture? How did how does it affect their lives? Yeah, and you know, you you brought in a couple of terms here about behind the meter or not. I know those are utility work terms, but the consumer doesn't think about it that way. The, the consumer has a home; they want it to be uh, safe, secure, efficient, and and they want to save money. So these are the things that the consumer cares about. So the interesting thing is we together in Rebello are at this intersection of the grid on one side, as you're talking about, and the smart home consumer on the other side. We see both directions and can be helping consumers kind of uh, bridge what happens. So we, as you're, you're mentioning, you see really clear examples. You're getting a new EV, you're getting a new heat pump and so on, and it affects how energy gets used in the home. We can make all that work in a, in a very nice way by, by leveraging this platform that, that you all have created at that intersection of the grid and the smart home. Well, Mike, look, our partnership with Sense has been one of the most rewarding ones we have. Uh, and, and I think it's the best example of really changing what the future looks like. And I'm really excited about the work we're gonna do together. And I thanks a lot for having this conversation and uh, have a great one. Likewise, thanks so much, Tim. Thank you, Mike and Tim. It's such an incredible, incredible story and an incredible partnership. We are excited to partner with the Sense team and they do have a truly wonderful team uh, to work with, but, but consumers are really driving this change and we're excited to be a part of the change um, as we shape the energy future. Uh, so don't forget to join us uh, for the next episode, and you can also follow us on social media. Please engage with us there. And until next time, thank you very much. <laughs>